Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today we are taking a look at a Polish Vazor 88 Tantal. Uh, these are often looked at as a simply a Polish AK-74, but they're actually far from it. There are quite a lot of differences, some of them substantial and some of them fairly subtle, that make this not an AK-74. Now, Poland of course was a member of the Warsaw Pact, as the name of the pact might imply. Poland had adopted uh, the AKM in, or the AK in general, in 762 by 39 and they were kind of primed to, to update that to the AK-74 when the Soviet Union finished developing it and offered it under license to other members of the Warsaw Pact. In fact, uh, Poland had been working through the 1970s on their own sort of reduced, it was Project Lantan, this is a topic for another video, but they were already looking at a cartridge with a lower bullet weight, higher velocity than 762 by 39 So you would think that they'd be all, all in for the AK-74. Well, the problem was, when they finally got the details from the Soviet Union, they were really pretty unhappy with the license cost and the export restrictions uh, that the Soviets placed on this technology transfer. And so the Polish government decided, you know what? we don't need the AK-74, we can do it ourselves. And they in fact did a very nice job of it. Now, leading up to this, uh, in 1980 they had finalized a design, the Vizor 80, WZ-80, which was a 762 by 39 millimeter AKMS with a three round burst option. And it used a system that would transfer onto the, the Tantal, where in effect what Poland wanted to do was split the single control of the AK into a, into two controls. And this is something that we see widely in military firearms. The idea of you either have a single lever that is both safety and selector, for example safe, semi, full, or you have two separate levers where this lever is safe and fire, and this lever is semi and full. And there are plenty of examples both ways, there's really no obvious superior choice, like they both have pros and cons. The Poles decided they wanted to split this apart and they also wanted a three round burst built into it. So the Vizor 80 is their AKMS with this new fire control mechanism. Now I bring this up because when the Poles decided not to purchase the AK-74 technical package, they set up a set of design criteria for their own rifle, uh, which did include using the standard Soviet 545 by 39 millimeter cartridge. Uh, Poland would put that cartridge into production starting I believe in 1983. But what they wanted from the gun was essentially as much compatibility with the existing AKMS as possible. So as many uh, interchangeable parts, not necessarily to be actually swapping parts on guns in the field, but for manufacturing. Like, our rear trunnion is great, we don't need to change the rear trunnion, we'll leave it alone, it'll be an AKM rear trunnion, where the AK-74 had uh, changes to the design of the rear trunnion. They then, when it came, came to like practical handling characteristics, they wanted a universal folding stock, and they didn't want to use the underfolder stock from the original Soviet AK design. Uh, they wanted this uh, fire control system from the Vizor 80, they liked it, they wanted to keep using it. Uh, and they wanted to be able to use rifle grenades, uh, which is something that the AK-74 was not set up to do. So uh, design began, the first prototypes of what would what, be, what was known at the time as under its code name of Project Tantal. These code names for Poland by the way are generally based on the periodic table, so this is Tantalum, one of the exotic elements, shortened to Tantal. They also had uh, Project um, Beryl for beryllium, and so on. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Uh, first prototypes were done in 1981. There was some slowdown, there was a lot of social unrest in Poland that kind of set this project back a couple of years. Rifle um, uh, Production rifle acquisition didn't really start back up until 1984-1985. And then they would have a first field trial in 1986, which went not so well. So. Uh, let's take a look at what they what they ended up designing, um, and then we'll come back and talk about the, the field trials and the adoption and the production of the gun. If you are looking at a Tantal from the outside there are a number of distinctive elements that are fairly easy to spot. One of them of course is the selector lever on the left side of the receiver. Some people 
we'll be able to easily spot the difference in the safety lever over here as well. Note that it is a different, slightly different shape than the standard AKM or AK74 lever. This is because its pivot point is lower, uh, so the regular AK safety lever mounted higher up, a little different profile to it. The front handguards are distinctive, they have this sort of orange colour on the bottom handguard, which does have a palm swell like a 74, but it is not the same actual uh, part and they don't interchange. The upper handguard is sort of a duller brown uh, plastic. And we have a very distinctive muzzle device. This was of course developed to be able to launch rifle grenades as well as to act as an effective muzzle brake. It does both things fairly well. Um, the Poles would actually develop an underbarrel grenade launcher for these as well, which we'll touch on in a moment, but um, this is distinctive amongst AK-74s. The markings on the Tantal are pretty standard AK type things. We have the factory mark here, this is uh, an Oval 11, that is Works 11 in Radom in Poland, where it was manufactured. That is the only factory that made these rifles. We have a manufactured date of 93, uh, and then a serial number. Now as I mentioned before, the safety has been split into two separate controls. Uh, we have a Z for safe and an O for fire here, and that is simply treated as a safety lever, as well as a dust cover of course. And then over here on the left, operable by your shooting thumb, assuming you're right-handed, we have our selector lever, we have C, P, and S. C is fully automatic, P is semi-automatic, and S at the very back is the three round burst setting. A couple other mechanical elements on the outside before we take this apart. The folding stock uh, was copied from the East German folding stock. The rear trunnion in the Tantal is an AKM type rear trunnion, not a 74, and it is completely compatible with standard AKM fixed stocks, which frankly are, I suspect, a lot more comfortable to use. However, uh, Works 11 and Radom never built these with fixed stocks, they were all equipped with this folding stock. One of the other distinctions to point out here, and we'll just start our disassembly here as a result, is uh, the handguard retention system is different than on a standard AK. Typically on an AK you have to completely field strip the gun, because you have to take the gas tube off before you can take out the lower handguard. Well, the Poles thought that, you know, we're going to want to have an underbarrel grenade launcher on these, so let's set it up so that we can take the handguard off to mount a, an underbarrel grenade launcher without having to completely field strip the rifle. Which seems like a reasonable idea. Of course, you'd never, you, they weren't actually mounting grenade launchers in the field, that was done in an armory, so it wasn't something that ended up really being necessary. But, start by taking the cleaning rod out. Oh, you know what? Also, while we're up here, let's just take the muzzle device off so you can see that. This is left hand thread, it's got that little locking plunger at the front that locks in here when it's within a couple revolutions of being in place. So there's the actual muzzle, um, and we have this long uh, grenade launching device. Note the wire ring here, this is a tensioner ring, so when you put a grenade on uh, this will prevent the grenade from just falling off the, the rifle should you happen to point it vaguely downwards. Instead of the slots, the vent slots in the side of an AK-74 brake, we have three uh, spaced out holes. And then of course the front is rebated to fit a bayonet. Or bayonet lug right there. Now to remove the handguard we have a lever here that is really tight. There we go. Rotate that 180 degrees around and now the front handguard retainer actually comes off. Uh, it is not fixed to the gas tube. We can then take off the upper handguard and There we go. And then the lower handguard comes off, a little bit of a spring clip down there. And presto, there's that bit. Now to take the gas tube off we do have to field strip the rifle. As a part of the grenade launching requirements uh, there is a latch on the back here that allows, ah, this one's not quite working right, uh, normally this allows you to lock the, uh, the mainspring here in so that the dust cover can't come off without 
lifting this latch up. Um, and that's one of the common issues launching a rifle grenade off an AK, is that the recoil force uh, will cause the top cover to pop off the rifle. And so this was done to prevent that. No, pretty standard top cover. Other than that little latch, this is totally normal. But if you look down in there, ooh, we got a lot of different things. You can see the three ratchet teeth right there from the three round burst mechanism. We can go ahead and pull our bolt and bolt carrier out. That's basically AK-74. And now the gas tube comes out. So the gas tube is a proprietary Polish part because of several differences in how it attaches. A couple other things to point out here in the fire control group. The poles, for the sake of easier disassembly, actually added a separate trigger spring. You can see the coil spring right there, in addition to the hammer spring. On the AKM and AK-74 there is a rather clever bit of engineering design that allows one spring to do both jobs. That is a more efficient way to do it, but it's also more difficult to reassemble the gun. So the poles chose a different set of pros and cons here. Alright, I have this set to three round burst right now, and so we can actually see the ratchet mechanism move with the hammer. So when I pull the trigger we're going to release the hammer, it's going to come out, it flips to the second position there, and then when the hammer comes back it's going to reset it, it'll pop to the second position, and then on the third shot it resets completely like that. When I release the trigger now it goes back and it, it resets itself. One of the cool things about uh, the Tantal is that if you only fire, say, one shot of your burst and then you release the trigger, it resets the entire mechanism. So there are some uh, burst systems, like the M16's burst system, that have a memory to them. And so if you only fire two rounds of the three round burst because you let off on the trigger uh, quickly, the next time you fire a burst you only get one round and then the system will reset. The Tantals is always three rounds. If you end the burst early on your own it still resets to fire three the next time. One last fire control detail to point out, uh, the Tantal does not have the rate reducing mechanism um, that other AKs do. So another thing that the Poles just decided, I guess they decided the, the three round burst kind of obviates the need for a rate reducer. If you can't handle, if you're not skilled or practiced enough to handle using full auto, you just set it to three round burst, and then the rate reducer is kind of unnecessary. Before we close this out, just a couple other quick points. Uh, the poles, interestingly, actually put, they put night sights on these rifles, and they are actually tritium night sights, instead of what was typical at the time, which would be phosphorescent paint. Uh, so that's a, a cool technological step up on some of the other systems. A small number of early production rifles actually had an optics rail here, and that was intended for attaching a, a passive night vision scope, but it wasn't. So people may see those rails and think, ah, the Poles used optics on these. No, they didn't. They were all iron sighted guns, uh, with the exception of some night vision use, which was quite limited. And then the way that the stock actually folds is using this lever at the back. You can see there's this locking cylinder right here, so pull the lever down and then the stock will fold around to the side of the gun. We've got this rubber pad on it here so that it doesn't scratch up the gun, and it leaves the safety and the charging handle uh, unobstructed so it can be fired with the stock folded should you need to do that. So the problem with the first field trials of what would eventually become the Vizor 88 uh, were largely kind of these ancillary problems that you might not think of if you were just focused on the firearms design, but substantial problems nonetheless. So the two that particularly come to mind are, one, the stock was longer than this final production stock. And as a result the stock was presumably more comfortable than the one they ended up using, however it was longer than uh, the stock setup for all of the existing AKMs, everything in the Polish military when it came to racking these rifles, to like putting them up in storage, uh, in armories, in vehicles, it had all been designed around the AKM. And so if you came up with a rifle that suddenly didn't fit that by half an inch even, 
now you have to rebuild and replace all of your rifle storage racks in the entire country and all everywhere else. Uh, and so rather than do that they shortened the stock so that this rifle would fit all of the mounting hardware for the previous rifles. Um, and at the same time it makes the gun, I think, rather less comfortable. But a fascinating example of where there may be considerations beyond the scope of what you see on the range that lead to design elements in the rifle. Uh, the other major problem at that initial trial was the magazine design. They had at that point a proprietary magazine, and based on this uh, the, the plan for maximum compatibility with the AKM, their magazine copied the locking architecture from the, the top of the AKM magazine. Which sounds great, except that of course then that means that you can take a 7.62mm AKM magazine and lock it into your Visor 88, and then it won't work, because if you try and chamber around it's going to try and jam a 7.62 round into a 5.45 barrel. You probably won't get the 300 blackout issue of the gun exploding, uh, because it probably won't be able to chamber fully enough to actually lock, but you're going to get malfunctions. And this is an issue where if it's the wrong magazine it's a lot better off to just not let it lock in the rifle in the first place, instead of try to come up with ways to ameliorate the problem and you know make it safe to do it the wrong way, or come up with ways to identify the different mag- no, you should just have a magazine that only fits the gun it's supposed to. So that's what they did. They redesigned the magazine and the magazine fitment system in the rifle to duplicate the standard AK-74 mag. So Tantals will take standard AK-74 magazines. Now when they went into production the Poles would initially produce a steel magazine that shifted later on to a glass reinforced polymer magazine, basically an AK standard AK-74 mag. Anyway, they get these things done, they do a few other things, they redesign the, the bolt itself to be compatible with an AK-74 bolt, so they're, they're kind of balancing practicality with their original plans for AKM compatibility. There's a second field trial that's held in 1990. This one goes a lot better, the design is accepted, uh, goes into production in 1991, it's designated the Visor 88, uh, and production would last a grand total of three years. 1994 production ceases, with 30 to 50,000 of these made in total. The reason being, there has been massive political change in the world, and Poland is now looking very seriously at joining NATO. They do not want to be part of the Warsaw Pact, they want to be part of NATO, and the military recognizes that this means changing, they're not going to be using 545, they're going to be using 556. And so there is no reason to continue producing 556 caliber rifles. Uh, even if they don't end up making a, a huge shift in their own military, they want to be producing 556 guns for export sales into NATO countries, which is now something that they're going to be able to do. So the whole project shuts down, this would eventually lead to uh, the rifle known as the Buriel, which is a subject for another separate video. Anyway, uh, that has been a somewhat long and hopefully interesting overview of the Vizor 88 Tantal. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it, a big thanks to Woody's Weapons and Sienna Armory for giving me access to this one to take a look at. These have been sold in the United States as parts kit built guns that often have, they're, they're substantially different from original true Polish Vizor 88s, often they're made with like the Tantal front end, but a standard AK-74 or AKM fire control system. It's really nice to be able to look at one that is in fact an original Polish built complete full auto, in this case a registered post sample Tantal. So, uh, and that's not the end of what I'm going to do with this, because tomorrow we're going to take this out to the range and do some shooting with it, and see how that three round burst works in practice. So join me tomorrow for that, and thanks for watching.